We're going to be using an electrolytic cell to determine Avogadro's number. Remember that Avogadro's number is the number of anything per mole. And in this experiment, we're going to figure out how many atoms of copper we're going to have, or we've used up in this experiment, per mole of copper. Now, to do this, we're going to add some energy to this cell. That means that's what electrolytic is as compared to galvanic, which means we're going to get energy or work out of it. You're going to do this for all three trials. So here you're going to take and you're going to expand your um, uh, video to fit the screen. We're going to start with trial one. And when you start with trial one here, you're going to over here and hit play. And as you hit play, what's going to happen on trial one, as you hit play, you're going to see copper and zinc up here. Now, to figure out how much copper was used up, we're going to have to start out by figuring out how much copper we had. So we're going to weigh the copper. We're going to record that value. They're going to take the copper and they're going to hook it back up to this cell. And they're going to set this into the sulfuric acid. Now, as soon as they put these two strips of metal into sulfuric acid, you're going to have to come up and hit the timer. Now, before you do that, record the amperage. The amperage is the number of coulombs per second that we are going to put into this electrolytic cell. So hit the stopwatch, hit reset. You've recorded your amperage, you've recorded your mass, and then hit play. And you're just going to keep running this until the experiment is done. The experiment is done is when they're going to stop and take these um, two pieces of metal out of the sulfuric acid. We've got to keep track of the time in which this occurs. So you may have to scroll back a little bit to get a good handle on what the time is. But sooner or later, they're going to pop them back in again. You may want to slow down just a bit, and they're going to stop your time right around there. So you're going to record your time. You're already going to have the amperage recorded, and you're going to come down here and you're going to do some calculations. First of all, the charge transferred in units of coulombs is going to be the amperage. That was that 0.338 multiply by the time which you got off here off of your stopwatch and that is going to give you the charge in coulombs do that for each three runs now we want to figure out how many electrons that involve well the charge for electrons is 1.60 times 10 to the min minus 19 coulombs for every electron so if we have coulombs as an answer here we know if we take our coulombs and we divide by 1.6 times 10 plus minus 19 coulombs, put electrons on the top, we are going to get the number of electrons that were transferred. Now, we don't want electrons, we want copper. Well, if we look at our equation for this reaction, we realize that we are going to take and use up two electrons or lose two electrons for every one mole of copper. So you're going to take your number of electrons, realize there's one mole of copper for every two moles of electrons, and you're going to get right down here the number of copper atoms. So again, repeat that if you get your number of electrons and you come down here and you realize that there is one copper atom for every two electrons, and if I said moles before, I'm sorry, so one copper atom for every two electrons, you can figure out how many copper atoms you have. And the last thing we want to do is get atoms per mole. Well, to do that, we've got to figure out how much copper we have. So if we go back to our scale, and we keep going on this experiment, it's going to take the piece of copper out of this, it's going to give it a rinse, it's going to let it dry, and then it's going to take and put the copper sheet right back up here. Now, the mass has gone down. The mass that was lost, the initial minus this value, is the number of grams of copper that has reacted. So once you have the number of grams of copper that has reacted, and you can look up the molar mass of copper, you're going to get moles of copper. The last step is realizing that if you take part three here, which is atoms of copper, divide it by part four, which is moles of copper, you're going to come down here and get atoms of copper per mole of copper, which is going to be our approximation of Avogadro's number.